and action. You are watching Project Cardboard. On with the video. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Project Cardboard and it has been a long time ever since I have dropped another video and that is why I thought it is appropriate for me to make a very long video today. So this is a time lapse of me making a cardboard model of the Leica, I think that's how you pronounce it, the Leica Q2 digital camera. It's a very, it's a really nice looking camera and it's not the first camera I've been making. And in my sort of break from making YouTube videos, I was by myself just making cameras and I made a, a Leica M9 and a Hasselblad and a few of those like really well-known kind of film cameras so today I'm going to be making a digital um, Leica Q2 camera so that is what is up for today so I started out by cutting out a strip of cardboard about about three inches about three inches tall and then I peeled the corrugations where it would bend to make the shape of the body of the camera and I cut it to shape so that it would um, be able to glue together then I can do the rest of the details so I just peeled off the tip of the cardboard so I could wrap it around as so and glue it and then I started to draw out the designs so the the design of this camera, Leica designed it in such a way where it's really simplistic. It has a really simplistic design, and it's really just bare minimum what you need to take a great photo. So, it has a shutter button, an ISO button, and like two more buttons that they don't have letters on them, but they're buttons, and then the viewfinder, and that's pretty much it. So, it's really simplistic, so I, I thought it might look really interesting to make it out of cardboard. So then I started to cut out and like kind of rough out the shape of it because it's like kind of a stair step type thing. Like one part is lower than the other where the buttons will sit. It's on like the lower part. Then I glued it together. And I always have my computer there with the with the picture of it. I have some pictures of the model that I'm building. And I always do that, especially when I'm doing it for YouTube so that I can really make sure that I do it properly in detail and don't forget any of those little details that make the whole thing come together. So there's a lot of different types of cardboard and when I'm making something from cardboard I try to I try to get the right type of cardboard because sometimes they they have different colors. Some are more like bright brown color and some are like grayish even and sometimes you have color cardboard with like text on it and sometimes I do like to put some of the text in it but for this Leica since it's so simplistic in design I wanted to leave it just with the plain cardboard so it's not distracting from the beauty of the actual camera that I'm trying to make So then to cover up the top, I took some pieces of cardboard. I always make sure that it's pretty crisp and clean, the cardboard, and that's why I store I just lean it against the wall when nothing can touch it or get wet or anything. And I cut it roughly to the shape, and I scored it, the edges, with the X-Acto knife, like this. I just cut the edge so it would easily slot into the slot onto the cardboard frame that I already made, the body so that it will not be shifting and it won't you won't see corrugations because it's real un unpleasant when you see corrugations and it's really nice if you can cover them and I do leave my corrugations open sometimes to show that it's cardboard because that's a nice it's really nice um it has a nice um aesthetic to it when you can actually see the corrugations of the cardboard so you know that it's a cardboard sculpture not uh plastic sculpture or something else so it's fine but for my cameras since they're pretty small in size not like when I'm making a car or a motorcycle I would make I would leave the corrugations open but for such a small thing like this that you can just hold in your hands 
I like to cover the corrugations because it makes it a little nicer. So then I put in supports. I just cut some strips of cardboard and put it in it there, in there, to just make sure that it stays so it doesn't get smushed or like bended. So I did that on the bottom also. I put a piece in the bottom as you can see there. Then I began, then I cut out another piece, also cut off a thin edge off of it so that it could slot inside of the top. Then I drew out where the hot shoe would sit and I just cut it out. It was just like a little square. I ended up cutting out the square too small, so I ended up making it bigger later on. Then, like I said, I squared the side, peeled it off just that tip of it so it will slip in without leaving any sight of the corrugations. So then I put glue. I'm using the Elmer's glue. And a while past in this YouTube um, channel, I was saying how I used to use Gorilla Glue, and I do use it sometimes, but I pretty much switched to using Gorilla Glue. I've used a lot of different types of glues, trying to see which one works best, and I've just fallen with the regular Elmer's school glue. I've tried the clear glue, it just didn't work. I tried the Gorilla Glue, and it's just too strong, so I use it when I really want something to adhere to something really quickly. So I use that every once in a while, but my go-to glue is the Elmer's school glue. So right now I was experimenting with the, I ended up not using this, but I just took the brown paper and saw how it would be by crumpling it and gluing it to see that like leather texture of the handle. It didn't work out in the end as I, how I wanted it to, so I just went with some regular just peeled cardboard and put on there. So I actually did not, this did not come to the end of the build, I just didn't do it. So for the top, I noticed that the top was a little crinkly and you could see it just was, it had some blemishes and I just wasn't so happy with how it was. So I ended up just gluing a few more pieces of peeled cardboard onto it and gluing it and just pressing it to make sure it dries. Just like that, I just peeled the cardboard with a pencil and then with the peeled piece I just put glue and glued the piece of cardboard on top so that it's smooth and it has no wrinkles or crinkles or blemishes. And this did take a while f to dry and it wasn't that pleasant and now I think about it in hindsight I might have used Gorilla Glue for that because it would have really adhered those two pieces to each other and it would have dried much quicker than it did because it kept peeling because as when you wet the cardboard with glue especially when you're using thin peeled cardboard it really can start curling just a little and it curls and that really ruins it ruins the finish so it's best to put it down and keep like a weight on it I did the same for this side I just put glue spread it out I'm kind of out of frame sorry and I spread it out and I put another piece of thinner cardboard on it like that just to make sure it's smoother then I took another piece of cardboard random cardboard and shaped it so I could use it to press it down on there and that was pretty much good for now and it did take a long time to glue so I kept pressing it and just trying to really keep it down so it could stop curling because it insisted on curling on me so that's fine I just did it until it stopped and I was still trying to do the leather handle thing it just it just really wouldn't work and that's the thing about seeing this video in a time lapse because it shows a real lot of the behind the scenes things like testing out parts and testing things like I've never tried doing a leather pattern before so I just thought that maybe I could cr crinkle the brown like wrapping paper and glue it on to see that like leather texture on the handle but it ended up not working so I just went a different route
So I traced out where the lens would go. That circle is where I'll glue on the lens later on. And I just cut out that so I could put it and wrap it halfway around the handle, just as such. And then I'd glue it too, and I did the other side as well. So I, it took a while because cardboard, sometimes when you try to curl it, it might try to slowly just like go back. So you have to really bend it in so it really wraps around the handle so that there's no dots and it's no um, bumps once you glue it. And I just pr really pressed it on to make sure that it stays. And I could have used Gorilla Glue for this also. And that's what I really find nice about um, making models out of cardboard because it's really, it's really nice because you have to kind of figure it out, unlike buying a plastic model, and there's no problem with buying a plastic model, but when you do, you're like building what they gave you, but when you're making a cardboard model, you make your pieces, you design the pieces, you think about what will work, what textures, and in cardboard, there's not many textures, it's usually just corrugated or smooth. So you have to really, you know, think about different things, and sometimes I incorporate paper, into my build and sometimes like I was saying I can put like the text cardboard in there to make it look a little more a little more recycled there's just a lot of different things you can do so then I started with the buttons and this was for this build it was the most complicated part I always say that but it was the most complicated part of the build I rolled a thin piece of cardboard and it was really tedious I just kept rolling and rolling and sometimes unrolling and rolling again just to make sure that I get it tight and I rolled that strip into a piece I'm really badly out of frame sorry and I rolled it peeled the tip so it could really stick and I glued it on then I took some peeled cardboard and glued it on just like that and I just glued it then I peeled a piece of cardboard glued it onto the thin piece of cardboard. I don't, really, I don't really know what to call it, but like when you peel the corrugations off of cardboard, you have this thin just like the front face of the cardboard. And I did that and glued on the button, and I did that for all the rest of the buttons except for the shutter release button, and I'll show you how I did that in, in a little bit once I get done with this button. Then I put glue on the bottom and glued it right on. And when I start to put the buttons, it really starts to look like a camera and something digital because that's when you really know it's something digital when you put buttons on it. So next came the hardest button, I think. I think it is because on this camera, I must check, there are three buttons so yeah now I'm making the shutter button and the shutter button was like I said really challenging since it was really the smaller it was a really small button it was so hard to keep the strip of cardboard that I rolled to stay rolled it kept unrolling and it took me a long time so that's what I did I just kind of struggled with it and this button, I still ended up not making like the every detail on the shutter button because it was just, it would take really a long time to do it. And I just, with cardboard, I had a really hard time doing that. But it's not the first like a Q2 I will make. I'll probably end up making another. So I rolled up the cardboard, the thin strip of cardboard, I cut it from the same material of the other one and I got these boxes from a store because when you go to grocery store, some stores you can put it in like natural groceries, they'll have, they'll give you boxes to put your groceries in instead of bags and that's really nice, you know, trying to recycle and not use plastic so much and that's where I get a lot of my cardboard from and this cardboard if I if I remember correctly came from one of those boxes and it's a really nice type of cardboard because it's like so bright and it really 
it really reflects light well, and it's almost like tan color, like a really bright golden, yeah, it's really golden color, golden color, so I used that and rolled it up. put glue on it and glued it right to there just like that then I started the other one and the other button was kind of built into the body it was like kind of had like a dip like a cut in the body and then it was put in there so I cut out a little part a little portion of the body with an exacto knife it's really important to have your knife sharp I sharpen mine on a piece of sandpaper once they get blunt I saw a youtuber talking about that so it actually works really well you just have to put it at the right angle and slide it and you can sharpen your own exacto knives and it really helps save blades because they get blunt pretty often they're really good knives but they do get blunt especially if you're using them a lot and I think when you're cutting cardboard they get blunt a lot quicker than if you were cutting paper or something but that's fine I sharpened it and I cut a hole and then rolled a piece of cardboard and slotted it in just like that then I looked at the image to see the next thing that I had to do and that was if I do believe the back and the back had some buttons and a screen it was a really simple design but that was really nice the hardest part of the back was the viewfinder because it was like it kind of bends around halfway of the body and I just didn't it didn't come out so well the viewfinder but it worked so I just cut out some strips I cut out a thin strip of cardboard and then cut it into little squares and put three of them there were three buttons on the back and the viewfinder would go right on top of those buttons so all Leicas are pretty much the same they all have the same layout with just little changes in button shape for example or screen size or something like that but I cut the button the fourth button on the body and I cut a smaller circle and glued it on the back and by now it's really looking like a Leica camera which is nice so then I started on the viewfinder and like I said that was really it was pretty challenging I cut it at like an angle so it could fit onto the body because that was how it was in the image and sometimes I'll change things around a little bit but it's really not the best to do that and for this one I wanted to try my best to make it as realistic as possible So I made the viewfinder by cutting out a rectangle, then the two top sides, the top and bottom half, I glued it on like that. Then I put a little piece, I ended up removing it because it wouldn't glue onto the body properly if I had it there. But I glued it on, it was a pretty small piece and with a lot of parts in it and like some hard angles, like the wrapping part that goes around, and I just put it test fitted it to the body, take it off, do some changes, I removed that little strip I put in, changed it around a bit, cut a round circle for the viewfinder piece. And it's not that realistic, this viewfinder, but I can redo it. Sometimes I'll just pull the part off and redo it again so it looks more realistic. So I cut out the circle, and well I cut out the two sides first and I glued it to the viewfinder piece. So then I test fitted it to the body and it was just a long process of test fitting, taking off, cutting and especially when you're doing such small things and you want to get it finished because for this time lapse already it's this time lapse is ridiculously long but it would be even longer if I kept trying to 
take it off and that's the problem because the glue kept coming off anyway I cleaned it up by putting another piece of peeled cardboard on top of all the angles of it and I put glue glued it on to the body and actually it looked pretty good in the end so then I had to leave to get some new cardboard because the type of cardboard I was using so far it wasn't really the type I wanted it was kind of thicker and I had this thin cardboard from a picture print and I used that to cut out the screen and I only had a little bit of it so I had to cut it really carefully to make sure that it worked and I cut out the screen glued the screen to the body test fitted it made sure how it looked proper and it's always better to cut it in small increments because you can always recut it to the right size instead of having to get a whole new piece of cardboard to do the piece if you did it wrong so that's pretty good it was really proper and by now my camera shut off so it's still a time lapse but I just had to plug it in and keep on to the video So now for the hot shoe. The hot shoe is where you can slide in camera accessories. It's like a camera specific thing. Um, it only has this type of thing, this type of attachment port on cameras. It's called a hot shoe. And you can slide in a monitor or a mic or a separate viewfinder thing. And certain cameras have them. So this is what the Leica had and I was making it for that. And this is just a little side so you can see how the bodies look next to each other. They're pretty similar. That was really too fast. But they're pretty similar. This one, the Leica Q2, is a little smaller than the Leica M9, if I'm not mistaken. So they're a little different, but they still have that same Leica look to it. Fujifilm also makes cameras that look like that. But this one is pretty unique in its design. And I really wish that I could do the leather pattern on it but that's just fine I can do another one once I practice with materials a little bit so then of course a really important part of any camera what makes a camera a camera is the lens so I took another piece of cardboard peeled it left just the corrugation rolled it and for this I used grayish colored cardboard and it honestly didn't work out so well it just kind of took the colors off because the body of the camera was one color and the lens was kind of a different color so it didn't look quite proper but it was fine and I rolled up the lens and then I put some more rolls on top of it and the, the other I cut some more thinner strips and that I used the brown the tan colored cardboard just so I could balance out the colors a little bit and I do like to use different colors and different values of cardboard to really you know switch it up a bit so you can see that sometimes it looks different and sometimes it's using a different type of cardboard So I cut out the aperture ring, the focus ring, and I cut out some other small buttons and I just wrapped it and put it to the body to make sure it looks. And sometimes with certain cameras, a longer lens looks better in the shorter lens. So for this one, I was trying to go for like maybe a 50 millimeter lens. For some of my models, I went for like a 35 millimeter because that's like the typical lens that you'd put on a camera. So I put on the focus ring and the aperture ring and the focus ring and I wrapped them around the lens and I glued them with Elmer's glue, Elmer's school glue, and I glued it right to the body and it looked pretty good at that point. And the hardest part of making a camera is the lens because like the most tricky part to make, tricky part. Because it's not hard, because it's just rolling, but when you get to the lens, I personally don't like to put plastic into my lens. And I have some people have asked, told me to put plastic in my lens to make it look 
more like a lens, but I just think that takes away from the beauty of the cardboard itself, because it is a cardboard model. So I just cut out some piece, round piece of cardboard to put it to sort of replicate the lens, and it actually worked out pretty well. And these are the photos of the camera in the end. It came out looking pretty nice and clean, and as you can see, the hot shoe, that's the hot shoe, there's a shutter button, it was really the hardest part of the build. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.